Hey everyone, welcome back to Vlogmas on Rose's Year of One. As usual, please ignore what is going on behind me. We are now A, in another stage of the redecoration, but also I'm trying to pack for going to Dublin tomorrow, so just pretend you can't see any of that, okay? That's the plan. So today we are doing my November budget check-in. For anybody who this is your first video that you've clicked on for me, in the year of 2021 I have been doing my year of one project which is where I am doing a quantity controlled low buy that I can only buy one thing a month, hence the year of one. But in tandem with that I'm also trying to get better at budgeting. I do have a video which I will link up in the eye that is like my intro to the whole year and exactly what is included in my budget, what isn't included in my budget and you can go have a watch of that if you want the sort of full context of this. Today we're doing my November budget check-in so let's get on into it. My budget is a rolling budget, it's £250 a month but as you know if you've kept up with these check-in videos I overspent a few months in a row back at the middle of the year and I'm basically still paying for that so I actually opened November with a budget of £209.23. I didn't have the full £250 to start with. What I spent that on was £39.40 on beauty services. £33 of that was on my nails and £6.40 was on getting my eyebrows threaded. Now I realised as I was editing the last check-in and then one of you commented as well to say in terms of my beauty services I'm always going on about how expensive it is to get my hair done but I get my nails done really regularly and it does eat a big portion of my budget and I never really talk about that. So basically I have really bad nails. Um, that is that is kind of long story short like my nails just break they do not grow very well as you can see at the moment they're they're faring quite nicely so I get my nails done because a normal polish it just chipped like I can do my nails and chip them five minutes later I appear to be very rough with my hands and I have really weak nails and it's just a really bad combination like I can chip my nails washing my hair like honestly it's it's so bad um, and that has always been the case and during lockdown last year when we couldn't get our nails done obviously I tried painting my nails again with some of the nail varnishes that I haven't gotten rid of and yeah I I hate it. I'm absolutely rubbish at it is the other side of it apart from the fact that I chip my nails so quickly and just make it a complete waste of time. I hate it with a passion. It takes ages, you have to sit there waiting for it to dry even if I use sesh feet, like, I feel like when I use quick drying things like sesh feet, my nails chip even more quickly than if I don't use quick drying things. There are times I have sat and waited for my nails to dry for like half an hour, got up, done one thing and like the whole nail has just peeled off. Like I am awful. I cannot paint nails and I have rubbish nails. So I don't want to do my nails myself. Anything other than like proper gel polish doesn't last on me. And I could buy gel polish to do it myself, but I'm rubbish at it. I have absolutely no artistic talent in terms of nail painting. So it is just something that I am much happier paying to have done because I feel so much better when my nails are done. I know it's like, it's such a small thing, but I feel like as well, your nails are one of the areas that you actually see. So it gives me pleasure to see my nails done because I work at a computer. So I sit and look at my nails as I type all day every day basically. Whereas things like having my eyebrows done or whatever, like I see it when I'm filming and I'm looking in the viewfinder or I see it when I look in the mirror, but day to day like if I'm sitting at work, like I don't know if I've got makeup on, I don't know what my hair looks like, I'm not looking in the mirror, but I see my nails and it gives me pleasure. So the thing about the budget is that it's a portion of my income that I have decided is disposable it's what I'm allowed to spend, it's there to be spent. So although I go on about things that I'm trying to spend less on because that is the name of the game generally is trying to be within my budget and figure out where I can cut back on. My nails just are not something that I want to cut back on apart from I also am rubbish at it. So I really, I like seeing my nails done. However, I do spend quite a lot of money on it. So 
generally it's £43 for me to get my nails done and part of that as well to go back to what I was saying about my nails being rubbish um, so the salon that I go to it's actually cheaper if you get standard gel polish I have chipped gel polish more times than I can count because I used to get the standard gel polish we've now moved up to I think it's called build it in a bottle it's by the gel bottle ink I think is the brand it's like an extra strength base and that is the only thing I still time to time chip it but that is the only thing I have had my nails like I've had shellac I've had powder um, I've obviously tried normal nail varnishes like I have done them all in my time and I have chipped them all like I, I can't explain to you how bad I am um, I actually and I even sometimes chip the builder in a bottle stuff but much more rarely than normal so I do pay a slightly higher price point because I get that extra strength gel rather than just standard gel so that's part of it as well but generally it's £43 and that is for me to get my nails done with level 2 nail art is what I usually book in for. The pricing in the salon is there's a sort of baseline for just if you want plain nails then there's level 1 nail art, level 2, level 3, level 4 um, or like custom nail art kind of thing and you pay more for how much, for how long it takes to do your nails and for how detailed the nail art is kind of thing. Basically I go every four weeks to get my nails done but I was pulling my appointment for going away tomorrow slightly ahead so in November I didn't get any nail art I just got plain nails so that's why it was £33 in November and I think next year like I'll maybe do that a bit more often where I'll just have a month where I just have plain nails then I'll get some nail art and then I'll just have plain nails again and I'll maybe try and rotate it a bit as a way of trying to not have it be quite so much in my budget because I would like to spend slightly less money on it but going down the route of getting somebody else to do my nails, doing my own nails or going to uh, the cheaper gel, none of them really appeal to me. So the nail art is really the only way that I can kind of pull it back. So I think that's what I might do next year in terms of like if I want to try and balance it a bit better and spend a bit less on my nails. That is basically why my nails do take quite a percentage of my budget each month and I don't really go into it. It's because... I feel like with my hair I just get an overall colour, I don't get a particularly intricate cut. I feel like basically if I could sort the colour out, like I can style my own hair, I can do my own hair, that's I think the thing for me is there feels like there has to be an alternative to how much money it costs me to go and get my hair done. Um, so like I did this myself, this is a box dye which cost me £5 so versus 150 in the salon and then I can, I can do my own hair I can't do my own nails and that's I think why I focus on the hair all the time because I'm like I know there must be a cheaper way to do this whereas my nails I've been on the journey with my nails and there is not a cheaper way for me to do it and have my nails be the way that I like them every four weeks I do get my nails done it does take a percentage of my income but that is why so that was quite a long chat but hopefully it makes the point then I paid £6.40 to get my eyebrows done let's have a chat about that as well so I used to go to Blink to get my eyebrows done and it's £23 in Blink. There's not actually a Blink in Scotland so that's been a slight problem recently in terms of lockdown and whatever because I used to be up and down to London fairly often enough that I could keep on top of my eyebrows that way and then they opened a Blink in Newcastle so I've been to Newcastle a couple of times which I, I realise how ridiculous that sounds to be like yes I like getting my eyebrows done at this particular place so I will travel. Um, but I, I never just went just to get my eyebrows done like that was always a nice bonus and it was always like oh let's like plan our trip around the dates that my eyebrows need done but it would have always been there would have always been other stuff to do on the trip as well it's not like I was just going to get my eyebrows done basically I saw super drug have eyebrow threading so I was a bit like hmm okay let's give it a go so super drug are eight pounds which I got my eyebrows done in October in super drug eight pounds was quite happy um, and then in November they had a 20% off day so I got it for £6.40 but oh my god it was the most painful experience of my life so I have rubbish nails but I have quite good hair it's kind of the trade-off that I make um, and I have very strong hair and that is like that is true of my eyebrows and all my body hair as well as having like quite a lot of hair on my head getting my eyebrows done is always quite painful but like my whole forehead was like swollen for days after this it was really really painful and I've still got a lump in 
this eyebrow here, there's a lump. I don't think the camera won't see it, but you can feel it. It was like, like you know in a cartoon when a character has a like an actual bump that just comes out, that is what was like going on above this eyebrow. So yeah, I feel like you maybe get what you pay for is kind of the, the lesson I'm learning here. I feel like maybe if I had slightly less strong eyebrows, it would maybe be a different situation. I am actually going, it's December now obviously that I'm doing my check-in, I'm actually planning to go try and get my eyebrows done today before I go away and I'm going to a threading bar that's kind of near me so it's going to be a bit more expensive than Superdrug but still a slightly cheaper alternative than like going to Blink and also factoring in trips to Newcastle and London so hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be an improvement. I won't have a lump in my eyebrow for the rest of all time like it's gone down a lot like see when it like as I say my whole eyebrows were all swollen and red and raw for ages and then it just went and it was this bump and I swear it was about this size like it was really really bad uh, and then it, it's gone down but it's still there um so yeah going to not just rock up to Superdrug again and and I think this is the thing it's maybe with that kind of setup it's going to be down to and with any setup it's going to be down to the practitioner that you get but I feel like maybe with Blink there's more of a consistency of service because they're all trained in a certain way and it's a chain and and it's designed so that no matter which Blink you go to you would get the same service whereas I feel like maybe in Superdrug it's a bit more whoever you get on the day will do it the way they want to do it so yeah, that's the chat about super dog cheap eyebrow threading is not worth it. Not worth the saving. That was 3940 on beauty services. On beauty service replacement items I spent 4794 and that was on my wait and I'll go get them. It was on my teeth whitening products, which is this set here that I get. So it's from Spotlight Oral Care. They do lots of paid work with bloggers, but I paid for it myself obviously because it came out of my budget and what you get in the kit is a whitening toothpaste and then you also get a 14 like 14 days worth of whitening strips one upper and one lower so I think they say it's 28 strips but it's like 14 days for in two strips per day for your upper and lower so I 14 strips is what I would call it but you know what I'm saying. So I put up an Instagram because they had an offer running. I got two of these, that's why it was 47 whatever it was. Uh, but usually these are £40 each so it was quite a good time to stock up because I knew I was going to do one set before it went to Dublin anyway. So so this is my teeth um, having done one full course. Um, and a few people DM'd me to ask me about my thoughts on this. So obviously I've paid for it quite a few times now. Um, it's cheaper than going to get my teeth whitened professionally so it suits my budget better. It's not as dramatic as the Crest whitening strips so I don't, I don't personally know, I've not researched it properly but what I have seen is that the Crest whitening strips that you get from America are 14% hydrogen peroxide. You get quite a dramatic before and after with them. This is I think 1% hydrogen peroxide because it's much more strictly controlled in the EU and the UK than it is in America so they can't put more than whatever the percentage that's in these it's much lower than the Crest strips but they can't put more than that in it to sell it um, in the EU. What I've kind of seen is people saying like these aren't as good and they're not as dramatic but I do think they lift the staining and that's that's what I want it to do. If I do two courses of these a year so I've done one um, ahead of December and I'll probably do the next one in June ahead of my birthday in July. I'm quite happy with that and then when I go to Florida next year, fingers crossed that that all goes ahead, I probably will buy the Crest whitening strips and have a slightly more dramatic set and then use this to maintain. So I, I don't know how helpful that feedback is. I'm perfectly happy. I've repurchased these several times. I feel like they are safe to put in your mouth. I feel like they're probably slightly safer than the Crest whitening strips. My teeth are a little sensitive after using them. Once I get onto like day seven onwards with the course, you know the sensitivity kind of builds up over time, but it's not unbearable at all. I'm just kind of slightly more aware of my teeth than normal if that makes any sense at all. It was particularly cold during the two weeks that I was doing it so I feel like I maybe felt it more than I would have if I'd been doing it another time of year or something so 
that's my feedback on the whitening strips. I really like them. I've repurchased them several times. Not as dramatic as the Crest, but to me it still does make a difference. I drink a lot of Diet Coke and I can definitely see a before and after difference with my teeth when I use them. So those are my thoughts. Another thing about the Spotlight um, range is that it's owned. I think there's two female dentists who are kind of the face of the brand and then there's a third female dentist who kind of works a little bit behind the scenes but it's three women it's an Irish brand it's obviously not a small business in that sense like they're they're distributed into like boots and everything they've done a lot of paid work with influencers who will have cost a lot of money so there is obviously money behind the brand it's not like a small independent brand or anything like that but it's a woman-owned brand and it's yeah it's it's to me it's better to support that than it is Crest so you know, you can feel good about it from that point of view. I didn't spend anything on miscellaneous services or experiences. I spent 31.81 on eating out. I do have to say 14.81 of that was with ZZ because I got a voucher for 50% off food. So my friend Lindsay and I went and I had a starter and a main course and a glass of wine and it was 14.81 from using my voucher. So sign up to ZZ emails if that's your jam. And then on work lunches, I ate out three times at work. Once was £8, once was £5, once was 5 50 So that was a total of eighteen fifty. I do feel at this time of year, because the Christmas food starts coming through, I'm more susceptible to eating out. Like, I take it as like my personal mission to test the Christmas offerings in every like supermarket and like lunchtime fast food kind of chain. So... I did kind of know it was probably going to start going up at this time of year but I feel like three times isn't too bad over a month. I think we can cope with that. Then entertainment was quite an expensive one for me last month. It was 48 34 9 on Spotify, 9 on Netflix, 7 99 on Amazon Prime, £3 on Patreon. Then I spent 1 on, oh, Disney Plus. Disney Plus were doing a thing because I I spoke about this a bit more in my last video actually that I've been signing in and out of like having these accounts so I closed my Disney account and then they were doing a like introductory thing where you got $1.99 for the first month and then it goes back up to $7.99 so I signed up to have a month of $1.99 and I'll probably keep it in December for Christmas films and then I'll maybe cancel it again in January and then probably pick it back up later in the year before I go to Disney so one ninety nine for the month of November anyway. And then I spent seven thirty nine and seven ninety nine on two different books and two separate transactions. So that was forty eight thirty four on entertainment. I didn't spend anything in tools for hobbies. I spent forty one sixty five on replacements. And this is where if I hadn't bought my replacement I would have come in under my two hundred and nine pounds. But Kiehl's were doing 30% off for Black Friday. I really like the Kiehl's Hydro Plump. Over the course of this year, because my replacements have been coming out of my budget, I have tried other alternatives. So I've had the, the Ordinary B5 um, and Hyaluronic Acid one. I've had the Ordinary Marine Hyaluronics one. I feel like they work as hydrating serums, but the Kiehl's one goes a little bit further. It's called the Hydro Plumping Retexturizing Serum, and I do feel... There is something in that retexturizing bit of what that Kiehl serum does that just makes my skin feel smoother and softer and I really really like it and it's also where I particularly feel the benefit is because it's ophthalmically tested. I can take it up around my eyes because my eyes are very sensitive. They don't like a lot of stuff so it, my eyes don't react, react to that one. So I really really like that serum basically and it is really expensive for being like a hydrating serum because I'm using like a vitamin C or a retinol or whatever like I'm using other things that are more targeted and that feels like it should be like my basic serum that I should be able to switch out for one from like the ordinary or something like more budget friendly but I do notice the difference when I'm not using it. It's probably still a bit too expensive for me to be like I'm going to use it all the time but when they had 30% off for Black Friday I was just like I'm having that. Whatever the usual price is, is 30% more than 41.65, and the only other discount I've ever really seen Kiehl's doing is up to 20%, so it felt like a good discount to get. That knocked me over. So my opening budget was £209.23, and my spend for November was £227.64. So I was 18.41 over my budget. It's one of those things at this point, I feel like even if I had not overspent in July, 
although I've come in over my £209 opening budget for November, I've come in under the £250 a month that I'm aiming to spend. And this is what I was thinking about after I'd filmed my last check-in, is that yes, I went way, way over in July in particular. So I'm still paying for that because I'm still trying to claw it back. And that's, I'm not going to change that because that is the thing is that what if you damage your financial health, you are still pulling it back and paying it months down the line after you've had whatever has caused you to have that damage in the first place. So I'm not going to change it, especially not with a month to go for the year. But I do feel like I've been like, oh my god, like I've not been able to get in my budget name, but like you actually have been in your budget all these other months. You've just still not recovered from the overblow in July. It's two sides of the coin. Part of it is like, look, you are getting better. You are managing this better. Like, it's just that you've still got that historical kind of impact impacting you now. But the flip side of it is, well, but that's the thing with financial things. If you don't get in control of them and you don't learn to manage your money, the historical impact will still be hanging over you. And as I say, my budget is a percentage of my income that I've decided I'm happy spending. So if I go a bit over that, it's inconvenient, but it's not it's not actually me going over it into like an overdraft or whatever. It's me overspending on what I want to be spending on. So it then impacts on like how much I can save each month, etc. But it's not like I'm getting into debt with like the bank or anything and then I'm going to start paying interest. But the whole point of this is to try and train me to be better with my money so that I'm never getting into like debt with the bank and running up credit cards and things like that because of the tendency that I've had in the past to overspend. Like I've been very very lucky with the fact that overall this my past behaviours and the way that I used to overspend and like really emotionally spend hasn't impacted me financially. Like I know I'm very privileged and very aware of that privilege because I see so many people who are in this sort of budgeting anti-consumer mindful spending community who like come to it because they were like I was in credit card debt for a hundred thousand pounds and like I would be if my parents hadn't bailed me out like several times over I'm so aware of that my parents are retired at this point like I don't want to be taking money off my parents ever again so the whole point of me doing this is to make me better at managing my money so I'm still going to do it and I'm not going to just like let myself off the hook for the fact that I've not managed to get back in budget yet like we're still the plan is still December I get back in that budget and we end the year without having gone over like the annual budget but it's to also learn that lesson that like yes a couple of months splurging and six months later I'm still impacted and that's how it would be if I went splurging in a big sense on a credit card so that's why I have not to do that basically. With that said that means I am opening December with a budget of £231.59. How likely do I think it is that I'll come in under budget in December? I think it is quite likely. I think I'll fix this by the end of the year. However, the full reason that I think I will fix this by the end of the year is because I haven't done anything really in this first week of December when I'm filming this because I'm going on holiday tomorrow when I'm filming this. So I've been in like pre-holiday planning getting stuff done mode. Week two I'm not actually here. Then I'm back for like between then and Christmas and then Lauren and I are going away to London after Christmas. So the way that I have done it is that if I'm going on holiday that comes out of my year of one. I use uh, my low buy to control that so that so the money that I spend on holiday doesn't come out of my budget. Other than like one of the books that I bought I did buy when I was in London last month it was £7.99 and I took that out of my budget because I didn't want to count that book as a holiday purchase. Um, so it's, it's a bit flexible like that but it means that when I'm in holiday in terms of like my food and all of that it's not coming out of my budget it's coming out of me costing up the holiday and then using that as one of my items that I am buying in my year of one. I do think I will come in under budget in December but I think that will be massively helped by the fact that there will be 10 days of December that I'm not actually here for. So yeah, I think I'll manage it, but I think I'm getting a helping hand to manage it and I think it's important I'm aware of that. I'm not feeling like the most triumphant in terms of my budget, which you know if you've watched the last check-in, I kind of 
thought that it was going to go in this direction. So I am definitely taking the budget forward into 2022 because I want to be feeling like, yes, I've got this budgeting under control and I'm, I'm not feeling like that yet. So budgeting will definitely be going forward into 2022 with me but I think that's everything I have for this update so thank you very much for watching this is one of my vlogmas uploads as well as being budget check-in in one of my standard videos um, because I am doing vlogmas new videos on my channel every single day between now and the run up to Christmas so don't forget to check back on a daily basis for a new video thank you very much for watching this one and I will see you tomorrow bye <laughs>